This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I am very excited to talk about the newest release for Avid Media Composer and I'm talking about version 8.7. In this lesson we're going to go over some of the big updates in this release and I'm going to talk about probably my favorite feature, the one feature that people have been asking for more than any other feature probably in the entire history of Avid Media Composer and yes you can now do it and I'm talking about being able to match frame titles and mat keys in your Media Composer timeline. Now before we go on I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer but sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And once we're in Media Composer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my bin that has some GoPro footage in it here. And you can see that this is a larger than HD clip so that I know that I'm gonna have some flexibility when working with it, especially inside of FrameFlex. So let's head on in there to our source settings. You'll see that I'm already on the FrameFlex window, which is a familiar window, especially working with larger than HD material. But the enhancement that comes inside of our FrameFlex window is down here towards the bottom of the FrameFlex options, and that's the ability to come down and to rotate the frame at 90 degree angles, either clockwise or counterclockwise. You can simply just hit the button, boom, rotation, boom, rotation, boom, rotation, and then we're right back to where we started. I'm just gonna cancel out of that now. And let's move on. It's funny that this enhancement comes up now right after I do a tutorial about the audio punch-in tool. I'm just going to come to my tools. Let's come down to audio punch-in tool. And the feature enhancement inside of the audio punch-in tool is right here towards the top. You'll notice that it's turned on by default, which is to stop at the end of a track or stop at the end or at a mark out point that you have set in your timeline. Now, what's obviously the advantage? Well, in a lot of cases, you might not want to end right when your picture ends. You might want to just trail it off a little bit. Maybe the VO is running a bit long. You're going to shorten it up after the fact. Now you have the ability to keep that punch and tool recording past the end point so you can get all of the dialogue you need recorded every time. Again, another great enhancement. Let's just close that up here. Now, one thing that can be said about Media Composer, and this is one of its absolute strengths, is the amount of information you're given when you're working in your timelines, when you're working in your bins, when you're working in the Composer window. And again, this is another enhancement when it comes to information. How many times have you had a client say, I need all the information you have on clip X, Y, Z. And what we want the ability to do is to be able to just take you know this information copy and paste it and send it to the client now of course it seems that i don't happen to have any bins that have any footage in them there we go there this is probably okay i've got a few clips in here uh, you'll see i've got this clip here and i got this clip here perfect these two are fine okay and what i'm going to do with this clip here is i'm just going to add an in and out point here there we go perfect okay so the enhancement for the clips that comes along with what I'm about to show you actually happens inside of the console. So it's happening behind the scenes when you hit the command, command, option, and I, control, alt, and I for all my Windows friends out there. Now, as soon as we hit it, again, nothing happens because what's happened is going on in the background. I'm now going to call up the console, command and six, control and six for all my Windows friends. And you'll see now that we've been given an absolutely staggering amount of information about this clip. Everything from where was the path that it came from, what's the frame count, you know, what's the project it's associated with, and even the video codec that was used to encode this file. This is a great way you could just come in, select all the information here, copy, paste into an email, fire it off to your client. All right, let's now talk about some bin enhancements that we have going on inside of the newest version of Media Composer 8.7. 
which by the way, as of you watching this, it's going to be available to you inside of the application manager. So feel free if you're not working in a project, I don't wanna be sending you over there. If it's the Friday of a long weekend, you're working hard on your project, hey, maybe I should update now. No, 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 finish your project, then update and have some fun with the new features, okay? So what we're gonna talk about was bin enhancements. I'm just gonna select my sequences bin because this is a common situation that editors have all the time. You're working, you got you know, 15, 20, 30 bins open. In the past, if you wanted to close everything except you know the sequences bin in our case, you would navigate up to Windows, you'd come down to close all bins, you'd close all the bins, you'd go back to your project window, you'd search through to find the bin that you wanted to have open, and then you open it. Don't need to do that anymore. Now what we can do is simply navigate up to Windows and you'll see right below close all bins is close all bins but the active bin. So now I can simply select that and boom, everything else closes except the bin that I have selected, which is just another enhancement to make your life inside of Media Composer a lot easier. Okay, so let's talk about another few options that we have as far as bins go. What I'm gonna do is head to my settings for my bins. I'm gonna come down to the bin settings. And this is another common situation. Let me actually just close this up for one second. And let me just open one of my bins. I'm just gonna open the voiceovers bin, okay? Now, unfortunately, because I have the enhancement turned on, it's not gonna give the same effect that I was hoping for, which is normally when you come into a bin, you'll see that, you know, chances are if you had another editor in, in front of you, what's gonna happen when you open the bin is, is that whatever the last bin view was that was opened when you opened the bin, or what, actually when the bin was closed by the previous editor, that's the bin view that's going to be available to you at the bottom of your bin. But how many times do you just wanna go back to that same bin view that you like to work with every time? Well now, inside of our bin settings, we now have the ability to set the default bin view for whenever a bin is opened. You'll see I can, because I only have three bin views, I can come in and I can choose the one I want, or I could just leave it as not set. But for me, because I always like to use clips with Kodak, that's the one I leave it with. And now every time I open a bin, you'll see that it's gonna open with that clips with Kodak bin view so that I can see all of the information that I need to see. Now the last bin enhancement that we have is one that can be slightly annoying, which is when you're working in a project and another editor might have a bin open that has been locked. And what's gonna happen is when Media Composer goes to autosave, it's gonna warn you, say, oh, by the way, there's a bin open that's locked. What would you like to do? Would you like to save this, et cetera, et cetera. And in a lot of cases, you don't, you know, you might just be accessing that media to then just drop it in a timeline. You, you know, you're not making sequences in that bin or anything like that. So you don't need to do a save as. What you'd really like to do is just suppress that warning. Well, guess what? Now you can actually come in and say, skip prompts to save locked bins on autosave. Now I'm just gonna see if I can get Media Composer to prompt me with the error. There we go, or the, the warning, not the error, saying warning, turning this option on is gonna skip any prompts to save locked bins on autosave. So make sure you know what you're doing when you say okay. So this way that pesky error that pops up every time, and it's not necessarily an error, it's more so just a warning, won't be bugging you all the time. All right, I saved the best for last. Now, I should also point out that there are many other feature enhancements that have been put into Media Composer. Obviously, there's too many of them for me to show in one tutorial. That's why I'm giving you a list of the rest of them on the screen here, because really, every one of the updates that comes from Media Composer, at least the, you know the main point updates, has really fantastic features in them. And if you are on a subscription plan or if you've paid for your yearly maintenance that gets you Media Composer updates, make sure you update. All right, so let's talk about that last feature. And to do this, of course, I have to drop a clip into my timeline here. Let's just drop this in. I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, create a new video layer. And you know where I'm going with this because I already spoiled it in the description of this video we now have the ability inside of Media Composer, and how long have we waited for this? I've been cutting in Media Composer for 20 years, and I've been waiting for it ever since I started, and let me just clear my preview monitor here just to show you that with the title selected on V2, match frame is F7 on my keyboard, I can hit F7 to match frame that title. I can also hit F8 to show me where it is in my bin, so if I had something else selected, I could say, show me where that is, and you can now match frame not only titles, but Mac keys as well. Now there's something exceptionally important that I need to mention when it comes to match framing Mac keys and titles. 
the only titles and mat keys that you can match frame to are ones that were created in version 8.7 or higher. Now, obviously, I'm recording this when 8.7 comes out. So moving forward, all of your titles will be able to be match frame to. If you start trying to match frame titles that came from earlier versions of Media Composer, Media Composer won't do it. Now, what's the workaround for that? Well, if you happen to be in a project that has a ton of titles that you've just updated to, just recreate the titles. As soon as you do that, all the titles will be rebuilt inside of version 8.7, and you should be able to match frame those titles no problem. Obviously, for any Mac keys, you would have to re-import, so keep that in mind. All right, so I hope this brief video has shown you how great some of the new enhancements are inside of Media Composer, why it's a welcome update, and to be perfectly honest, why just because of the whole being able to match frame titles and mat keys, it really makes this one that you're going to want to update to as soon as your workflow lets you. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.